Hello everyone, this is Father Ed, and we're go today we're going to be working um, in the woodshop as well as here uh, on the computer. We're going to be looking at software and hardware or carving uh, half uh, tones. I'm using Aspire, but you can also use VCarve Pro and uh, follow the same tools and um, use the same methods. So let's get started. I'm going to open up uh, Aspire at this point and we'll get into the software. I'm going to create a new file and our width is going to be 10 inches and our height is going to be 9 inches uh, and we're going to be using mahogany. I'm going to import a bitmap for tracing. And the picture that I'm going to use is an old picture that has been converted to halftones of my mom and dad. That's too large because I want to build a frame around it. So I'm going to resize that uh, by going over here to set selected object size. And instead of a almost nine inch height, I'm going to make this 7, which will make the width 7.8. I apply, and that gives us, well, you know, I'm looking at that and saying, maybe I ought to make it just a little bit smaller. So I'm going to make the height 6 inches and apply. That looks good. Okay, so I close, and now I'm going to convert this JPEG into a vector. So I use the tool over here that says trace bitmaps fit vectors to selected bitmaps. We're using a grayscale, so we're using black and white. I'm going to set all of the uh, settings to default and then I'm going to preview it and now I'm going to apply. Close and um, that now I have something where I can carve. I'll click on this and the entire um, picture, uh, all of the vectors are connected together. In VCarve Pro, they will not be grouped. Um, you can group or ungroup by using this tool, ungroup or group. Uh, for today's lesson, we don't need to ungroup it. Now I want to build a frame. So I'm going to come over here to a rectangle and I'm going to drop down here and I'm going to bring this over and that looks pretty good to me. I'll apply, close, and now I'm going to create a frame that is one inch. So I will do an offset. Outward offset of one inch, offset, apply. So now I have uh, my frame outlines. Now I want to make a simple frame today. So it's only go I'm going to take the arch tool and come in closer, click, click, bring it all the way up, close, apply, close. Go to the modeling tool. Now if you are in VCarve Pro you're not going to be able to do this. Um, but um, I'm going to make, create a frame. So I'm going to pick tool uh, two rail a sweep. I'm going to select the first line and the second. And I'm going to use the selection and then I'm going to use this as the frame and I'm going to apply it. Now we get a look at that. Now, come back here. I want to make sure that all four corners are square. So I'm going to click on all the other three corners. And then I'm going to make sure that this is lined up properly. 
bring this over here. That's lined up. That's not. And the first one was lined up. So I'm going to apply. And that will make all of those corners uh, nice. Uh, I'll close it. So now we've got the graphic that has been converted to a vector. We've got our frame. So we're going to go, we're going to switch over to the toolpath tabs. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to, because this, oh, um, let me go back here. For those of you who are who have a spire, I'm going to pick this frame component, double click on it, and I'm going to raise it up because we're using three quarter inch stock. I'm going to raise it up three tenths of an inch. Um, so that frame will be raised higher. So I will close it, go back over to the tool paths tab. And because it is not a very, um, there isn't a lot of wood that's going to be taken away from this. I'm just going to do a final cut. 3D cut. We're going to leave a gap on the top of 125. We're going to say OK. And I'm going to use a uh, quarter inch ball nose uh, for the frame. I'll calculate that. That's what it looks like. Close. We're going to select the vectors, do a V-carve. I'm using a 30 degree V-bit. I've put a limit of two tenths of an inch deep. That will not go that deep, but uh, I put it on that. We will calculate that. It takes a while because there's quite a few vectors in that. And we will play that out. And because I'm going to be using a, a burnt red paint, let's change that to a burnt red and give us a better idea of how that's going to look. The only other thing that I need to do is cut out the profile. So I will close this. Go to Profiles. Um, it's actually 13 16 of an inch, so I'm going to cut it uh, 3 quarters of an inch deep, so we won't need tabs. Calculate. Play. And that's how the, the picture is going to come out. That's how it will come out. Um, so let's, uh, let's close this aspect of the... Uh, uh, the film, the video, and move into the wood shop. Hi everyone, it's Father Ed. Now we've moved into the wood shop. We are uh, off of the uh, the table, the computer table, and now we're here at uh, the shop, ready to start the carve of Mom and Dad. I've set this up with a three quarter inch piece of mahogany. That's uh, nine inches by twelve which is well um, within the size of the uh, uh, piece we're going to carve. Uh, we've screwed down all four sides um, and we're going to use um, a virtual uh, setup first uh, for our V-carve. Now we will begin the carve, but you don't need to watch the whole carve. Uh, if you've had any experience with a CNC, you understand uh, that this is a process.
Now, don't be dismayed if your car looks something like this. Um, that is the way it should turn out. If you look closely, though, you'll see that some of the detail is starting to show up. But that, again, don't be surprised. Uh, don't be disappointed, because this is the way it's going to turn out. The next thing we will do is fill uh, the grooves with a colored paint. We're using a, uh, a burnt red um, to fill it up. So hang in there, and this is what we'll do next. Before we painted, we took the air compressor and blew all of the lines out, get all the dust uh, so that we can um, make sure that the paint gets into the grooves. I'm not worried about the paint getting outside of the grooves because once the paint is dry, we will sand it all off, including this, and all of the surface paint will come off, leaving only the grooves. We have to make sure that we get a sufficient amount of paint inside the grooves. And what I normally do is I will take the compressor after I put all the paint in and brushed it in with a pretty firm brush, I will take the compressor and blow uh, the paint um, to make sure that it drives it down into the grooves. Now I'm doing this before I carve the frame because there's going to be paint that's going to get close to the frame. And um, even though I won't sand this until after it is dismounted, um, uh, the, um, the paint that would be by the frame will be uh, taken away with the, uh, the carve. I hope I'm making sense. I'm just doing this um, as we're, I'm thinking out loud as, as I'm doing it. So if it sounds a little unprofessional, you're right, it is. Now I've blown with the air compressor, blown all the paint out of the grooves. And now it's starting to come to life. Even before sanding, uh, you can see that the figures are starting to form. It's very exciting to watch this uh, develop. And uh, stay tuned because now we're going to carve the frame out and then we will uh, dismount uh, the plaque and we'll begin sanding. Okay, so now we've taken it off of the uh, CNC router table and uh, we are ready to do our sanding. But as you can see, the paint is dry and we're going to take a orbital sander and uh, remove the surface paint and we'll have our product. careful that I don't sand too much off and um, lose all of the detail. So you don't be in a hurry when you're doing at this part in your sanding. 
Okay, we have finished our sanding and it's come out quite nice. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck and God bless.